welcome to the Pancake Day edition of Cracking the Cryptic, um, one of the most important days of the year if you've got a sweet tooth like me. <laughs> um, now, what, what are we doing puzzle-wise today, though? Get your, minds off, get your mind off the pancake, Simon. We're going to try a puzzle called Square Dance by Chris Moore. And this, uh, we've actually had a few puzzles recently which have come in and instantly gone to the sort of top of the pile um, for solving because the testers have just had one look at them and just gone, wow, this is just brilliant. Um, and somehow I was unaware of this puzzle, which apparently was released um, uh, at least a week or so ago and it has a 100% approval rating over on Logic Masters Germany, which is always a good sign. Um, and I've had a scan of the rules and it's another of these puzzles where You've got um, sort of modifying cells going on. So this time we haven't got doublers or triplers or whatever or halvers. We have got multipliers going on in the grid. And that is why some of these cages seem to have very strange totals. Um, and I will explain more in a moment or two. But apparently this is a mathematician's dream, this puzzle. Um, or sort of an arithmetic. Uh, arithmetic dream or arithmetician's dream um, rather I don't think you necessarily have to be a mathematician you just have to yeah just have to like arithmetic and I certainly do um, now what can I tell you about today there's a few things to mention thank you so much if you joined us on the Teji stream last night um, uh, we did manage to finish the game and it was uh, I didn't think we were going to actually some of the puzzles later on in Teji are very well at least Mark and I found them very hard, but we did manage to we did manage to get to the end, which was a great relief, and it caused much debate about what game we should try next. There were all sorts of uh, suggestions, and I think that the two that keep well, the one we had recommended was something called the Case of the Golden Idol, and some people said that was good, and some people said it was too short, and some people said it had too many words in it. Um, and the other one that came up a lot was the Talus Principle, um, which I am, the only reason I'm worried about that, because I've heard that's brilliant, is whether it would trigger my motion sickness. So if you have strong views on either of those games or another game, drop us a comment under the video and let us know what we should or shouldn't be doing. Um, now I've got some birthdays as well today, quite a few birthdays. Matteo, or Matteo, uh, from your wife, Sara. Mel. You've turned 25 today from your partner, Jay. Uh, and Paolo, you have turned 24. And I know this because your sister, Madison, wrote to us. And apparently the two of you are uh, a long way apart, 4,000 miles. I think, Paolo, you're in New York. And Madison, you must be in Berlin, therefore. Um, so, Paolo, anyway, I hope you're having a brilliant day today. Although I am perplexed to read that you prefer lemon bars to chocolate cake. That that won't do. Um now, River, you've turned 28 today, and I know this because your boyfriend Trevor wrote to us. Um, oh, yeah, and finally, we have we had some sad news yesterday as well about a Welsh corgi called Newton, um, who has, with his owner Sean, watched apparently every CTC video since the start of COVID. Um, but very sad now that Newton has kidney failure and is in hospice care. And I think um, Sean's obviously devastated about that and intends to carry on watching CTC um, for as, as long as Newton is with us. So Newton, I don't know if you're going to understand, my friend, but we wish you all the best. And of course, Sean, uh, it is never funny when your pets are ill. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, we wish you, we wish you well too. Um, now on less serious matters, um, well, Glum Hippo, Glum Hippo's hunt is over now, over on Patreon. It has passed the 20th. So we will draw the winner of the plushie. Not today, but we will draw it soon. Um, but I've still got lots of names to read out of solvers who managed to complete the whole of the hunt. So very, very well done to the following. Andrew Cameron, Luminous Cat, Hamish Watt, Henry, hmm, it could be Henry Michaels or Henry Michels, maybe. I'm not sure. Pause and Smonko. Is that right? Smonko. Pause and Smonko. I think that's what I've written down. Uh, Scott Abercrombie, Marcel Helvig, Rob Lindsay, Beyond Book, Mike Jewell, Peter Sputh, Andy Child, Fabian Schulzer, and Andy Peterson. You all sent in the correct entries. Very well done indeed. Now, 
I will read you the rules. It's a square dance. And let's see what Chris Moore's designed for us. Um, and I've done a Chris Moore puzzle before, I want to say. I think it was called The Moons of Saturn. And it was a really, really good puzzle. Um, and anyway, let's let these are the rules for this one. Nine cells in the grid are multipliers. If a multiplier appears in a cage, then it multiplies the sum of the other digits in the cage to produce the cage total. For instance, if a cage contains three, four, five, and six, and three is the multiplier, the cage's total would be three times four plus five plus six, which is 45. <laughs> okay, well, I, I do at least see that. Um, each row, each column, and each three by three box contains one multiplier, and each digit appears as a multiplier once. So this is this has become sort of almost the standard code for these sorts of modifier cell puzzles. So we're going to have to put a modifier in sort of every row, every column. I'm just I'm just just having a go at doing this by Sudoku. So something like that. They could be the multipliers. And I've some I thought I thought I managed to put them all outside cages. So if this was the disposition of multipliers, then this would be a multiplier in the 64 cage. Let's see if we can work out how this would work. I want to put an 8 in there. If that was an 8, then those three squares would have to add up to 8, because 8 times the sum of three cells that sum to 8 would give us 64. So I think that is how um, the multiplier cells work, although I, I'm guessing we're going to find that there's rather more of them in the cages than I managed to put in there. Uh, cage totals are shown in the upper left corner of the cages. Okay, so that's normal rules. Inequalities between cells indicate which of the two is smaller. Okay, so in a, the, these are um, basically inequality signs will point to the lower digit, uh, as you might expect. And normal Sudoku rules apply other than that. So that those are the rules of the puzzle. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. That nine cage looks very odd, doesn't it? In fact, why don't we think about that first? How can that possibly not have a multiplier in it? It must have a multiplier because if it didn't, four, four different digits have to add up to at least 10. One plus two plus three plus four. So there is definitely a multiplier in there. And it, right, and the multiplier is a one because nothing basically because nothing else will work if we're looking at the factors of nine the next lowest apart from one is three so if we put a three in there then those three cells would have to sum to three to make that work and that's clearly nonsense so that is a one two three four cage basically two plus three plus four is nine it's the only way of getting to nine if you don't use a one but the multiplier is a one that's already quite cool um for well, yeah okay now i'm going to look at the 49 cage because you can't make four different digits in sudoku sum to 49 and that's that's a little bit to do with the secret but also just basic you know if we put nine eight seven and six in there we won't get to 49 49 is well it's divisible by seven twice isn't it so we must have a seven in there um because seven is prime so we've got to be so it's got to be one two four and seven in fact because the only way the other three digits could add up to seven is with is if they are one two and four and we've got an inequality sign so we can't have a one on the inequality sign that way and we can't have a seven on the lower side of the inequality sign um hmm 25 i want i want to put a five in there no no you can't put a five in there actually you can't put a five in there because if you do the other three digits would have to sum to five and the minimum sum of three digits in sudoku is six one plus two plus three so that's a nat normal k oh i know what i should do you know i should try and keep track of the normal cells shouldn't i so i'll use green for normal and red, red is already going to be our multiplier color. So look, we can do a whole load of normalization here. 
36 in four cells is impossible. So there's definitely a multiplier in there. Now, the only thing that gives me pause for thought about 36 is it has a lot of factors. We could use two and the other three cells would sum to 18. We could use three and the other three would sum to 12. We could use four and the other three would sum to nine. Uh, and we could, no, we could use six as well. And the other three would sum to six. So the 36 cage is particularly obtuse. Um, 81, yeah, oh, 81. Okay, so that's got a, oh, oh, hang on. That's, I've just identified a multiplier there by the power of Sudoku of all things. Um, 81 in four cells is impossible because again, the maximum we can make the Sudoku digits sum to without using multipliers is 30 with nine, eight, seven, and six. So there's a multiplier in there, which is gonna to have to be, it is gonna to have to be a nine, because if we divide it by three, which is another possible factor, the other three digits would have to add up to 27. Now we can't do that because nine plus eight plus seven is only 24. So we do need to use nine and don't quite know what the other three digits are. It's going right. It's going to be a nine, and then three cells that sum to nine. But more more interesting than that, I think, is this column and where its multiplier is living. And there's only one cell left that's not going to repeat a multiplier in a box. So that is. This is huge. Look, we're going to get loads and loads of stuff. All of these now can't be multipliers. So there's a multiplier up there in box one. There's no multipliers in any of these cells. Um, now 64, oh, what, well, okay. Both 64 cages have to have the multipliers in. Again, we can't make the totals large enough. So, so I get another multiplier in box one now. This is lovely so far. It actually, it's not that hard yet. Um, so because there's a multiplier in there and there's a multiplier in there, in column three, where is our multiplier? It must be in the very top cell. So there's a multiplier in the 16 cage. Right, and we can't write, and we can't use one again. So it's either, oh, it's two, it's two, it can't be four, because if it's four, we have to make the other three digits add up to four. So that, that square is just a given two. Well, it's not really given. That's slightly unfair to me. It's an earned two. So this is two, these three squares add up to eight and they don't use two, so they're one, three, and four. Here we go. There we went, we, do, we can't do anything with that. Right, let's look at the 64 cage then. Um, because 64 has got, well, it's got loads of factors. Two, two is too small because we can't make the other three add up to 32. Four means we need the other three to add up to 16, which is possible, I think. Um, six doesn't work. Eight, eight does work as well. Eight and then three cells that add up to eight. Oh, Ah, of course, right. So in fact, the two multipliers that work are four and eight, but we have two 64 cages. So the multipliers in these cages are four and eight. So actually, I'm, I've got an awful lot of multipliers now allocated. There's a one multiplier in here. There's a two multiplier here. Okay, I haven't got a three multiplier. I've got a four here. I haven't got a five multiplier. Or a six multiplier. I've got a seven multiplier. I've got an eight multiplier and I've got a nine multiplier. So I haven't got three, five and six allocated. Um, which, well, five isn't a multiplier of 30 or isn't a factor of 36. Uh, let's do some more greenification. And we can see that in column seven, there's a multiplier in one of those cells, which is there in fact, isn't it? Because if we can't, 
put a valid multiplier anymore in the 16 cage because 1 and 2 have gone and 4 was too high. So that's not in. So this square is a multiplier. We know this is 3, 5 or 6. We know that is 3, 5 or 6. And we know one of those is definitely a 5 because we can't put 5 in here. Now, okay, I want, I think, to take another look at this cage because they're, well, I think I'm thinking about this because of the puzzle I did yesterday, which was wonderful, by the way. Check it out, Empirio's puzzle, Safe Distances. But yeah, this is lovely. This is lovely. Right. What, how many overlapping digits are there between this two by two and this two by two? That's the question I want to ask. And the answer is there must be two overlapping digits because we know that there are three cells in this 81 cage that sum to nine. And however you make up a sum to nine in Sudoku in three different digits, you always have to have two of the low digits, i.e. two of the digits one, two, and three. Now, that's interesting. So you're either using one, two, six, one, three, five, or two, three, four. But those two low digits are obviously in that in that nine cage. So where are we putting two of the digits, one, two, and three, in this column? Well, they can't go in those squares. So whatever, i.e., whatever the two low digits are in there, cannot go in any of those six cells. So have to go in these cells. But we can only put one of them in the twenty-five cage. Because even if you put a 2 and a 3 in the 25 cage, the other two digits would have to add up to 20 at a minimum, and that doesn't work. So this digit has to be a 1, 2, or a 3, and therefore is a 3, which means that square is not a 3. Um, which means there is a 3 in here now. So this is not 1, 2, 6 now. Um, which might matter for reasons I can't, for reasons I can't quite work out. Uh, so there is either a one or a two in this 25 cage, and it's definitely in one of those two cells, isn't it? Oh no, it's yeah, it's lovely. That's really clever. Okay, okay. So the, the the question now is, what is the nature of the eighty-one cage? Because we've only got two options left, given that we know it's not one two six as the as the nine, the nine triple in here. It's either two three four and a nine. But if it was two three four and a nine, I'd actually have three overlapping cells between these two boxes. And that would mean I'd have to put um, two and four in here. And if I do that, they only add up to six, and that would have to add up to 19, and that doesn't work. So in fact, this must be one, three, five. And if it's one, three, and five, there is a one for sure in my 25 cage which means I now know the 25 cage is 1, 7, 8, 9, because the other three digits have to add to 24. Um, right, and that must mean... Okay, so, but now I know what the dub, what the not the doubler. I know what the multiplier is in the 36 cage, because the only two numbers we haven't allocated to... Um, to multipliers now are five and six and I can't put five into a 36 cage as a multiplier because it's not a factor so there is a six in here which means that square is a five and it means yes and, and it means that because I'm multiplying by six in this cage 
The other digits have to add up to six. There are three of them, so they are one, two, and three. There is a three, six pair here. This is brilliant. This is absolutely stark raving brilliant. Um, and beca because it's not, it's just fun, isn't it? It's just absolutely glorious. Look, this is a one now by Sudoku. Um, it's seven, eight, and nine in this column are very restricted by this. So, no, I was thinking, have I broken this? No, I haven't broken it because I can put the nine down here. So those are not nine, but those seven and eight have to live in these two squares. So there's a seven, eight pair in column four. We've got I think there's all sorts of Sudoku trickery we can... Oh, yeah, there is. Look, 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 look. Five. Where does five go in the middle box? Now, we've got this little inequality sign, which is doing some work here. We can't put the five there because that's not able to be one, two, three, or four. So the five lives on the, on the sort of low end of the inequality sign, which means five is in one of these three squares. Um, hang on, let's just see. I'm sure we can do more here. We just have to quickly, well, probably quickly, just work out what's going on. Um, ah, come on, Simon. What is it I meant to do? Uh, oh, I can use more multiplier stuff, can't I? Those two squares can't be multipliers anymore. So they are green. And the multiplier in, right, so, ah. Okay, so the multiplier in that cage was a seven. And so seven is in one of those two cells now. So that's not a seven. Which means that's not a four because it, this, this, this cell here can't be greater than this. If this was a four, this can no longer be a seven. There's definitely a seven in here. So there's definitely no multiplier in there. So this is the multiplier. Now the multiplier in this cage is a one. So there is now one in one of those two squares. So, oopsie. <laughs> um, so I want to get rid of ones there, put a pencil marked one here. Which might matter or not, what do we think? Um, Hmm. I don't know. Okay. So <laughs> this, do I know what this cage? Okay. So this is a natural 16 cage, which doesn't have a five in it. Whoa, well, okay, I can see one thing about this. It doesn't have a nine in it. Because if it had a nine in it, it would be one, two, four, nine. And that would mean by Sudoku, the one, two, and four in row four would all live in these three squares. And that square would have to be a one, two, or a four, which it couldn't be because one, two, and four live in the 49 cage. So there is no nine in that 16 cage. That's about as useful, I think, as a chocolate teapot, I'm afraid. Let me let me try and spot something else. Um, hang on. What, are, what am I missing here? Uh, oh, I know one thing I can do. The nine is the doubler, or the multiplier, I mean, in this cage. And I've worked out that's there, haven't I? So that square is not a multiplier. And if and the multiplier in there is a one. So that's a one. This is now a three, five pair, which means those squares are now a one, nine pair, which include the multiplier. So let's fix that. So in this column, oh, I see. So in this column, I've got a one, seven, eight, nine quadruple. So I've not put in 
two, three, four, five, and six. Oh, ooh, okay. This digit's obviously not a three, is it? There's definitely a three in here. Um, and I haven't put five and six in this column. So five and six live in these three squares. And that's not able to be five. And that's not able to be six. And one of these digits is a two or a four. One of them is a three, obviously, but the one that's a two or a four will have to live in that square. Oh, that's it. That's it. Look, beautiful. Yes, here we go. Where does two go in this box? Actually, oh, it's pl totally placeable. I hadn't spotted this. It's totally placeable there. So two, five and six go in. That's a two by Sudoku. This is a three, four pair. Two comes out of here which means I've got one, four, I've got a snooker maximum there out of nowhere. That digit's a four by Sudoku. Four lives in one of those three squares in box three. I've got, hmm, I've got all sorts of magic going on around the grid now. And for our next trick, we are going to say that I don't know. Can we? Oh no, I thought I was going to be able to put a two down here, but no, in fact, okay, so there's a two in one of those and a two here. So two is in one of these three squares. Probably in the 16 cage. I don't think it has to be though. If there was no two in it, we probably then have to put a one in it, don't we? Because otherwise it would be a minimum of three, four, six, seven, which is definitely more than 16. So if this is a two, I have to put a one in here, which would be, which would give me a one here. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What, um, <laughs> what am I meant to do here? Is it going to be? Uh, if I put eight in the 16 cage, the other three digits would have to add up to eight without using five. So they would be one, three, four, eight. That would push the two here as well. One, three, four, eight. One, three, four, eight. Is that possible or not? Maybe. I'm not sure, actually. I'm not actually sure if that's possible. I'm just going to put that in and stare at it for a moment. One, three, four, eight. That would be a one then. If we did do this, that would be a two. So this would be a four, seven. I feel like I've got too many threes and fours in the grid, um, in, in these rows. If there's a one in here, this becomes a four, seven pair. Yeah, so three and four would be, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't work because you have to put three and four here and then that square's got no value. I think there's a there's an there's an elegant way of demonstrating this though. Let me just think about it. It just feel that we've got too many I can see that we'd have a, a three yeah, it's it it is tied up in the ones as well. It's it's maybe not that simple to see it. It's maybe not that simple to see it. So, I mean, you can see if you put three and four in here, and three and four in there, then in row four, this has to be a three, and there has to be a four here. So this is a three four pair, 
but also because of this one that's become a one and that effectively means we've got a four and a one in there and makes both of those squares have to equal seven so that's another way of seeing it i still think there's an easier way of seeing it than this uh, anyway it doesn't matter that it we have i think conclusively proved that there's no eight in here so there's an eight in one of those squares which oh we don't know yet do we whether this has got four or eight in it Let's just think about that then. So if we put eight in a in a 64 cage, the other three digits are either one, two, five or one, three, four. But there's no actual restriction. Well, there's certainly nothing else. I don't think there's anything else in this box which forces it. What about that one? I don't think so either. Okay, so... Okay, so I'm starting to get into trouble now. <laughs> um, do we have to put... We've, we've worked out there's no 8 and 9 in this 16 cage. Do we have to put 7 in it now if it doesn't have 5 in it? If it didn't have 7, it would be 6, 4, 3, 2 as a maximum. 6, 4... No, 6432 is not enough. Right, that's interesting. 643 and 2 is only 15. So there is a 7 in here. So that, ah, oh, nearly. That's nearly huge. Because the 7 by the power of 7 inch in box 4 is in one of those two cells. And I thought I was getting a 2 7 pair, but I'm not because the 2 can escape out of the cage and go into this square. Ah, but no, it can't now. Ah, oh, this is gorgeous. Right. It can't, it can't disappear because the other three digits in the 16 cage have to add up to nine again, but they're not one, three, five. So they're either two, three, four, or they're one, two, six. And in both cases, they have a two in them. So that is a two, seven pair. This, this is a two, seven pair. Um, which... <laughs> does nothing it does absolutely nothing it means there's a seven in one of these cells it means those squares add up to seven without being um oh that's lovely right these add up to seven but they're not two five and they're not three four because that would break this square so they are one six so this is a one six pair which means there's no one over here now, which gives us a four, seven pair here, which gives us three, four, two, one. And we've got a sort of eight, nine pair look left in row five now we can put in. We've got oh come on <laughs> i think this is we're very close now aren't we to cracking this um we could argue that oh no i thought i was going to get yes okay where does five go in row two it's got to go there by sudoku so that's no longer a five Can we do better than that even? Do I know whether, no, I don't know whether there's a five in the 64 cages. The 64 cages are weird because they really don't, if I knew what the order of them was, well, no, actually, even if I did know what the order of them was, the four is very unhelpful. The one that's got four as its multiplier because three digits add up to 16, well, one way of thinking about that is to say, what's the average Sudoku digit? Well, it's a five. And three times three, so if you've got three cells that are average size, you get three lots of five, which is 15. So the, the one of these cages that you put a four in, you've got very close to an average total for the other three cells. Now, obviously the one we put an eight in, that's not the same, that's much better. Um, 
because the one we put 8 in has, has then either paired up with 125 or 134. No, I was just wondering if I could somehow, if that's got 8 in it, there's going to be at least a 1 in common between these two cages, which would put a 1 in one of those two cells, which would put, which would put a 1 here by Sudoku, and a 2 here. That would actually do work if I can prove that that one is, that one's got the multiplying 8 in it. So why why couldn't that have a multiplying 4 in it? Ah, uh, I've got oh, that's so obvious. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this has probably been there for ages. <laughs> okay, which cell of this are we going to make the multiplying 4? And it doesn't matter which one we pick, we've broken the puzzle instantly. In fact, this is another of these moments, um, which I do sometimes where I say, if you can't see why there's a problem, pause the video. And for those of you who managed to do it, congratulations. Whichever one of these you make for, it's the multiplier. So it's red, but it's going to make that square where it will, it makes the square in this box above it a seven. But in that box, the multiplier is the seven. So wherever you put the four here, you get a multiplying cell above it, which is the same. So you get two multipliers in the column. Or the other way to see it is that you can't then put a multiplier in column one at all. So you can't put four as a multiplier. You could still put a four, interestingly, in this box, just not as a multiplier. So that means there is an eight in this box and the eight is a multiplier. Now that means in turn, we can get rid of the four pencil mark. We can definitely keep a four pencil mark over here, but we now know the other three digits in this 64 cage sum up to eight. So they include a one, which actually must be in one of those, uh, which must be in one of those two cells. So that gives us some digits. One, four, four, seven. Now the seven is the multiplier. So this is going to do work. We can get those two un unreadified. So the eight comes out of here now because the eight is, eight is the multiplier. But I think perhaps more interesting is what this does with ones because one in row seven now has to be in one of these three cells, but it can't be on the wrong side of the inequality because we can't write zero in there. So this puts a one there. And now we ask where one goes in column nine because it's not there and it's not there. And it seems to have to be here. So that's a one, that's a two, that's a two, that's a seven. <laughs> um, there's now a two down here. Oh, Bobbins, I thought that was... Oh, I thought that was going to keep going then. Um, do we know? Yeah, okay, we we do actually. I should have seen this before, but I didn't again. Um, what is the, the makeup of the three cells that add up to eight in the 64 cage? Well, it's not got four in it. So this is one, two, five. So there's a 2-8 pair here by Sudoku and a 1-5 pair here by Sudoku. So we can tidy some things up. And in this column, well, that, actually that's a 5 now by Sudoku. Okay, and we get 6, 8 and 9 left into the gaps of column 2. Okay, which is useless. We've got 5 as a digit in one of those three squares, which might be, it might be important. Um, we know, okay, so we've got three, we've got three cells in there that add up to, that add up to 16 which
Um, <laughs> I don't know what I'm meant to do with that. Uh, okay, sorry, I'm not spotting it. Let's have a think instead about... Maybe, do we have to do some Sudoku now? Oh, please no. Oh yeah, okay, let's think about eight. There's got to be an eight in that domino, which might do something. No, that was a terrible, that was a terrible thought, Simon. Uh, no, I was about to say sevens in the middle box. That would have been an equally terrible thought. Got this seven, eight pair down here. What else can we do? Could we do... Oh, that square can't be a five, apparently. Ah! Is that useful? If I've got five on the inequality here... That's... I don't think that is useful. Oh, hang on. The four is on the inner corner. Ah, goodness me, Simon. Right. Look, I've got um, multipliers in rows eight and nine already. So I can't, these can't have multipliers. So there's a multiplier on the inequality sign here, which is a four in this box. Right. So we've not got four in here. So so this is a four five. Oh, it's so easy once you see it. Okay, this is a four five pair by Sudoku. So using the inequality sign, we can just fill it in. And the four is the the four is the multiplier. <laughs> so we can do this. We can do that's got to be the multiplier now in the thirty six cage. So that's the six. This is getting greened. Uh, that's therefore a three. Um, now, three, no, I thought I was going to be able to get my three in box six. Ah, ah, but three in box nine is down here and it, it aligns, look, with the threes in box eight and doesn't give me a three, unfortunately, in box seven, but I thought it might have done. So in this box now, we've, we need two more cells that add up to 11, don't we? Yes, this is good. This is good because we've got four and five, but we know that the four is being added to three numbers that add up to 16. So we need to put a low digit um, in, in the cage in the sense that if there was no two in it, because there would be no two, three, four, or five, you couldn't make a domino that adds to 11. So you've got to use two, you've got to use, pair it up with nine. Um, so this is no longer a nine, look. The two is doing some work in the bottom of the grid. So we get the two and the eight. We know that the eight is the multiplier. So the nine goes here, the one goes here, the one and the five get sorted out. Those two squares lose their redification. All of the multipliers are done out of absolutely nowhere. That square is not an eight. Um, we can five, we've got the five and the three which gives me a three in box nine. Have we got any? No, no threes in the corner today. Suddenly thought I'd not been looking at those. Um, one and six are doable in box, in box six. We've got to put a six in one of these two squares in box nine. So we're looking at sixes, sevens and eights. Yes, that's a naked single seven because the eight look has got to live with the six in the bottom corner of the grid down here. So that, that puts seven in the corner up there, which means that that square's a five, that square's a four, and this is an eight, nine pair, which might help. That can't be seven anymore by Sudoku. We've got an eight, ah, look, that's a nine in the top of the grid. That's an eight. This is a seven, nine, so this is an eight. This is a nine. That's no longer able to be nine. Come on. Um, 
four and seven. This this is such a good puzzle, by the way, that I think this rule set could make more appearances on the channel. It's just been a delight from start to finish. Now, obviously, that's partly because Chris has set this puzzle so very well. So maybe it'll be another Chris puzzle that we were able to do on the channel to sort of showcase this rule set. But yeah, where does the six go in this column? We could have got that before had I actually bothered to do any Sudoku. That's now become a nine, apparently. Let's let's delete all these pencil marks and try and work out what's going on. Three and four have to be placed. We can do it. Four and three go in. Three becomes that digit. Three becomes that digit. Um, <laughs> come on. Oh, eight is done. is done. So that's become a seven. That becomes an eight. Okay, so those are no longer seven looks. So here we need a six and a nine, which I don't seem to be able to do, but I can therefore say that that's become an eight, which means that's become an eight, which means that's become an eight. And we still need to put six and seven into box, box one which gives us, look at that, that's a four, six, seven triple and makes that square a nine to complete that column, which gives us a six and a nine, which gives us a four and a seven, which gives us a four and a six, which gives us a seven and a six. I think we're there. I really do. We've got to put two and seven, which can do that. Yes, if I'd done this in a more efficient order, I think there were all sorts of Sudoku opportunities to uh, avail myself of, but yay <laughs> square dance chris moore take a bow that was quality from start to finish absolutely lovely idea and executed just beautifully it's a really nice thought isn't it to have a digit that multiplies the sum of the other digits in the cage and to execute it with that sort of aplomb i mean it's a it is just beautiful let me just think. So I love the fact I could instantly know what the nine cage was. And I think I could get the 49 cage, couldn't I? And I could get a bit of, well, this was lovely. The fact that I could use this 25 cage a little bit to narrow down the options for the 81 cage, that was beautiful. And then I can't quite work out how I, how I, I, I knew that, I think, I think I, because I knew there was a multiplier in that 16 cage that couldn't be a one, I then knew it had to be a two, didn't I? And that was, that felt important at some stage. And then we were able to work out the order of this three, three and five. Again, it was sort of to do with this magical 81 cage down there. Um, there was yeah I could the thing I felt I was I, I was clunky on was understanding the nature of this 16 cage I think there was there was probably a very simple way of finding out what this was I had to sort of iterate downwards by knocking out nine knocking out eight realizing it had to have a seven and then it became forced but I think that there was probably a more elegant way to do that. So you guys can let me know what I missed in the comments. Anyway, absolutely love the puzzle. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.